From the beginning then, the Sempervirens Club sustained a two-fold goal that was quite characteristic of progressivism, then beginning to take hold in the Golden State. On the one hand, members of the club, which included a congregational minister and the Jesuit president of Santa Clara College, were motivated by a theologized or quasi-theologized vision of the Redwoods as living entities embodying nature at its most sublime, hence requiring immediate protection from destruction. And at the same time, these redwood groves, these attendant rivers and creeks, this abundance of wildlife, these birds, these trees, these flowers, these ferns, this vast forced stillness afforded human beings a transformative experience spiritually, psychologically, and in terms of their general health. The Japanese, incidentally, possess a similar belief inspired by their ancient Shinto and Buddhist practices. Shinran Yoku, translated as forest bathing, which contemporary science is verifying empirically the fact that we can get better in the redwoods, breathe fresher air. The redwood trees, after all, are the largest absorbers of carbon dioxide and releases of oxygen on the planet even shake off depression and feel better about our life and prospects. Of course, up to 25 generations of Native Americans had experienced this relationship to the Redwood Forest in pre-European California. It was for them, in fact, for Native Americans, all of creation itself, the place where they lived, the source of their sustenance, the inspiration for their myths and rituals. Today, the Semper Virens Fund is working in partnership with other organizations to bring an appreciation of the Native American era of the Redwood Forest, the tribes, the land stewardship practices, the archeological sites, the mountain echo experience as a way of keeping contemporary California connected to and appreciative of this Native American legacy. At the center of this legacy for the Native Americans and for us is the question of sustainability. Ours is an era regrettably challenged by environmental damage, pollution, and waste, and the realities of drought. In this regard, what the Native Americans knew through observation and intuition, we now know through modern science. Namely, that the redwood forest as a totality, sunlight and fog, branches and redwood needles, root systems, and fern-covered forest floors constitute a self-sustaining, self-replenishing process uh, that has not only kept these redwood forests vital for thousands of years, until the de deprivations of the late 19th century, that is, but serves as well human habitation. Redwoods absorb carbon and produce oxygen. Redwood branch needles condense fog into droplets, and these droplets form water sources for the tree itself and for the surrounding flora on the forest for floor. The carbon extracted from the atmosphere by the redwood trees and the oxygen release stabilized climate at a time justifiably fearful of climate change. To capture the condensation, the distribution and storage of water offer a natural model for systems that we Californians must ourselves devise and create on a statewide basis. The biotic diversity of the redwood forest, from flora to fauna, from ground-bound creatures to insect life, indeed to biological communities in the heights of the trees themselves, to the birds who soar above the trees and alight upon their branches, this too suggests a balanced biological diversity that includes adjacent human settlement and human enjoyment of the forest at the core of the Semper Virens Fund philosophy and program since the days Andrew P. Hill and friends first assembled in Big Basin and laid plans for the first California State Park. The early members of the Semper Virens movement, in effect, launched the preservation of the surviving redwood forest of the state through the establishment of a state park system. They created, in effect, wilderness preserves, but they were urban and suburban people who loved the outdoors. And while they respected nature in and of itself and wished to preserve it, they were also hikers, campers, anglers, birders, botanizers, amateur geologists who wished to experience the redwoods in a proper manner as well as preserve the redwoods. 
Thus, the Redwood Park as an institution became their ideal, given the fact that the Santa Cruz Mountains were in the immediate proximity, as of 1901, of some 60% of the population of the entire state of California was living at that time from Santa Cruz to San Jose to San Francisco to Oakland, Berkeley to Martinez with the great John Muir, founding president of the Preservationist Oriented Sierra Club had spent a decade and more as a successful fruit rancher. And it was the selling of this fruit uh, ranch that gave him the financial independence to devote himself exclusively to mountaineering and riding. Human society, in short, so the early members of the Semper Virens movement believed, could destroy nature. Indeed, a certain sacrifice of the environment was required by urbanization. So the ancient Etruscans believed, and hence offered sacrifices to the gods of nature when they established a new settlement. Pure wilderness had its place in the scheme of things and should be protected. But so too did the park the properly planned park, the properly developed park, the park used with respect and administered with proper stewardship. So too did the park hold co-equal status on the preservationist front, which is one reason why pre-progressives and progressives rallied to the Semper Virens campaign to persuade the state of California to establish a park commission, target endangered redwood groves for purchase, and assemble them into the first California State Park. Remember, early members of the Semper Virens movement, before and after the California Redwood Park was established, approached nature on its own terms, but like their predecessors in the 1870s and 1880s, also enjoyed the camping experience to include responsible angling, campfire camaraderie, even presentations of plays, poetry recitations, singing, music, and dance. 